How's everybody doing today? Can you guys hear me okay? Okay, great. So, uh, good? Okay, great. So I'm going to try to stand away from this and see how that works. Um, so I wanted to talk to you guys about a few things. Who's, who's hungry? We're about lunchtime. Yes. Anybody hungry? <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, <clears throat> so I want to talk about food production, I want to talk about Puerto Rico, and I want to talk about decentralization and how they all play together. Um, we're all hungry. I'm going to try to jet through this pretty quickly, but we scheduled this for right now when we were all thinking about food. So um, deal, deal with the fire a bit, as you will. So a few things have happened in my life and in your life, and this is through all of the Western world, and it certainly shows up in Puerto Rico. Uh, when we were kids, what it meant to buy food was a lot closer to buying food than what it means today. Now, similarly to the central bank's role in our food production, or in our uh, currency production, and the power and manipulation that, that garners, garners a central authority, we have a, <coughs> excuse me, we have a similar uh, situation in food distribution. So um, nowadays, when you go to the market, there's a premium to get poisoned less. So this is to buy organic produce, it's a niche, small thing that you've got to go dig for and pay more for. And it's a sad state, and it's not how things should be. So I felt compelled to take action. And I've got a plan that we can deploy here in Puerto Rico that's forthcoming. So um, there's a few tenets and improvements that have happened in food production that a lot of us might not be aware of. Um, given the high profit margin of the marijuana industry and that being unlocked globally, there's a lot of new um, innovations that have come through the last 15, 20 years that need to be brought into the food supply. And it gives a, a noble way of decentralizing the food production so that people can have good access to organic and uh, pure, healthy, vitality foods. So <clears throat> one of the problems in how we've seen food, and it was uh, in great part by the American food pyramid, is we see it as mass and calories as opposed to nutrition. Um, Food is not just about growing a bunch of potatoes so that we get mass and volume and calories. That's not really the, the model that behooves us as humans, or any animal, really. Instead, we need to be thinking about vitamins and nutrients. And what really matters is the daily allowance of our vitamins more so than the mass of our calories. So aquaponics, who here is uh, familiar with hydroponics? Does anyone understand this? Great, and then anyone familiar with aquaponics on top of that? So just, just in brief, uh, here's the history of gardening. We used to plant seeds in the earth, and the earth was everything. And then we realized you could take earth, put it in a bucket, and you've got raised bed gardenings, flower pots in your house, kitchen herb situations. Um, from there you realized, or gardeners realized, that it's not actually the soil that delivers the nutrients. It's nutrients within the soil that can also be delivered through water. So this gives us aquaponic, or hydroponics first, which is the ability to run water past roots and deliver the nutrients through this methodology as opposed to soil. So major innovation. Um, it was almost the way there. If you look at the system of hydroponics, you still have a one-sided equation. You still have to put a juggalug in of some sort of nutrients. God willing, these are healthy organic nutrients, um, worm castings or you know, bioavailable nutrients that give us the nitrogen we need for the food production. Oftentimes, though, they aren't, and you could use things like miracle Grow that you're juggalugging into your system. So you've got this great benefit. It's a closed loop. It's using water. It can be done indoors. You can control lighting and other variables, but you still have the ability to be inorganic. Um, and again, if we're talking about nutrients and biodiversity and health as opposed to calories, the nutrients are primary as opposed to um, just the caloric value. So the next phase is aquaponics. Now, if you look at hydroponics as a one-sided system, this is the harmony of nature. And as we all know, the deeper we get into research, the further along we could ever hope to get is just repeating what nature's given us innately here on Earth. So um, the aquaponic system is you have two outputs. You've got a fish system powering a garden system. And it's kind of like a top that instead of needing to keep spinning it, you find magnets around it that can hold it in perpetual motion. So you've got a very um, fully developed symbiotic closed loop system when you have aquaponics. You've got a volume of fish mass. It could be koi, tilapia, depending on your interests or the aesthetics that you're, that you're going for. Or they could even be wild fish in a pond that have just always lived there. Now you take that, and what the fish need to survive is um, to have their roots cleaned. So they need filtration off of their own waste. And what the gardens need to live and thrive and the surrounding vegetation is the nutrients that come from the fish waste. So instead of pouring a juggalug in of um, perhaps amazing or dubious nutrients, 
you're able now to set into harmony two systems that balance one another. Um, this is a massive innovation. So just with a simple pump taking the entire fish mass water volume, circulating it into garden beds that are, that are again uh, hydroponic, this closed loop system uses 98% less water than your conventional farming methods. Also, when you're talking about indoor or controlled environments, you can go up, which on a simple acre in a warehouse, if you can do five layers with lighting in between each growing bed, you could have 15 acres on one acre of warehouse space. So there's crazy innovations that enable both outdoor and indoor growing in new ways. And we want to bring this innovation away from just the high yield beneficial areas of marijuana growth and production and other areas that it's taken hold and bring it into the food supply. And obviously with the need and opportunity in Puerto Rico and the valiant minds around the world coming together to support these causes, um, this is gonna be our first step. So starting, yes sir? Sorry to interrupt. Sure. You talking about closed loop, the fish need what though? Do, do they? Good question. It's not, it's not a fully closed loop. Um, it's actually, we need to produce fish food. Um, so I want to break away for a moment and talk about our space. We're gonna, that's a very good question actually. So we have in our space a 7,000 square foot agency in downtown Los Angeles. We're in the process of deploying the first prototype, not the first ever, but a prototype that we get data points for ourselves from. There's much research online. We did clearly not invent aquaponics. Uh, but we're setting something up so that we in our space can grow the food necessary for our team to have the vitamins and the vitality that we want in our uh, living and working environment. So. We're setting up a 500 gallon tank that's going to power garden beds that we're going to do the best to eat the things that come from the garden. And you're right, it's an almost closed loop system and the input is fish food. Now here's what gets really exciting about our system at the office. I tell this often to my guests when they come in and we show them where the system will go. Um, I have a company where clients pay me some money. I take a bit of the money and I buy some fish food. The fish food powers the fish. The fish power the garden, the garden powers the kitchen, the kitchen powers the team, the team powers the clients. So I've got this elaborate arbitrage on fish food, if you guys like economics. Um, another thing is that you can do the math of the available grow space depending on what's being grown, and you can pencil out the nutrient value for the people in your space. So it's very possible now, with limited resources, limited costs, to implement gardens within spaces that have been tabulated to deliver the food necessary for the children in the school or the children in the classroom or the employees in the agency or the members of the gym even. So the ability has just not been brought online and so our prototype in the United States is going to be the first test pot. We're working with Restart Week down in Puerto Rico to build a test in Mayaguez. From this we're going to be touring the other city officials university, school officials, anyone we can get involved to the deployment in Mayaguez, and then we move there to spread it throughout Puerto Rico. So the first phase is gonna be a showpiece. It's gonna show that money in equals food out to the people in need. So it's almost like a free energy uh, food kitchen that continues to pr produce its own goods. And the other thing about having the fish in the system is it's a mandatory organic system. The moment you try to put anything else in the system that doesn't work, it's going to kill the fish and you're not going to be left with something um, organic. So in closing, I just wanted to let you all know that there's a big innovation that can be brought into the food supply system. Do your best to support it if you see it out there. Come find me if you'd like to be involved in what's going on in Puerto Rico. And then um, lastly, there's a beautiful thing that kind of ties back to your question. In our space, in our office, um, I don't want to grow compost. So we found a very innovative solution to our food scraps to bring it back into the system. We can add a little egg, add a little flour, roll it around, bake it or dehydrate it really low heat, and we've made our own fish pellets. Now my very most exciting element of this is that the better our office can get at eating a diet that's high in pro protein, high in good fats, low in starches and carbs, and high in nutrients, and good fiber as well. Um, the more we can eat, which is similar to a paleo diet, <clears throat> the more we're then able to give everything of our table scraps onto the fish food. So if we have waste in our own diet, we can't carry that onto the fish. So what's really interesting, which can happen in our office in Puerto Rico and God willing the globe over, is that our diets, in order to take our food scraps and put it into the system, actually get righted by the needs of the fish. So we're all part of the system, whether we understand it or not. 
and deconstructing the uh, food delivery mechanism that's got food deserts all over the world, that's making people pay premium prices to not get poisoned, is simply not the way to be. So let's bring these innovations in. Let's start in Puerto Rico, and then let's take it to the world. Thank you. Guys.